first coat set up a little bit and then First is I want to go ahead and get this entire front suspension back on the car because everything is painted. Now it can actually go on there and stay on there for good. And I do have this 20 gallon fuel cell right here that I actually want to go ahead and install today. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another 1965 Mustang video. In today's video, I gotta show you guys around the car. It looks absolutely phenomenal. In the front, we got everything painted out up here. And let me tell you guys, this right here turned out absolutely amazing. You can see we went ahead and just coated everything in and everything turned out awesome. We also coated this area right here. So once we put the fenders on, we won't really have to remove them ever to uh, paint inside there. And it's just gonna be black, kind of how they did in the factory. And same thing inside here, we got everything painted out. Transmission tunnel is fully done. It's all welded together. And we are deciding we are gonna put an automatic in this car just because I don't really want, I don't really like manuals just to begin with. Plus the fact that we're gonna have to run a clutch pedal and do all this extra stuff just for a manual, just so you can sit in traffic and hurt your foot, which we do not want. But man, this area turned out freaking fabulous. Same thing with the rear. You got the entire trunk area all undercoated. It looks literally brand new. I still need to put a little bit more. I kind of ran out, but this entire area looks super good. But in today's video, I really want to focus on starting to put this car back together. The first thing we're going to start with this car is I want to go ahead and get this entire front suspension back on the car because everything is painted. Now it can actually go on there and stay on there for good. And the main thing we need to actually do is get this thing painted because as you guys know, when we did use that acid inside the shop, it just made everything rust. So we had to actually get this thing entirely sandblasted. So all we need to do is actually air blow this off. And then I got some special direct to metal paint. We can get this thing painted in. So let's go ahead and get this cross member painted in and then we can start assembling everything in the front. So guys, we got the entire uh, subframe nice and painted, and man, dude, it looks freaking good. Uh, all the welds are freaking beautiful. So we're gonna let this dry up, and then we're gonna start assembling the entire front end. So guys, the subframe is nice and dry. Now we're gonna go ahead and roll it on under there with our nice creeper from Harbor Freight. Now, what am I gonna lay on? It doesn't go up that high.
So guys, check it out. I honestly love the semi. It's like a semi-gloss. Had to do a little bit of touch-up right there, but it's looking good. We also went ahead and painted the bolts black over here, and man, does it just look absolutely phenomenal. Now let's go ahead and start installing both suspension sides. So guys, check it out. We got both side suspensions on, everything lined up perfectly inside here. We got all the spacers on and pretty much everything is good. We are definitely gonna have to do some aligning with it because as you can see on this Cortex suspension, there is a lot of points. You can adjust it this way, you can adjust the camber, caster. So we're gonna have to, once we get the wheels on it, you know, we'll do all the adjusting. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and get the steering rack on here because it can go on here for good. And the cool thing is Cortex Racing actually, this is from a, I think a 70 something, Fox body, but it is brand new. And it did come with these rubber bushings, which we are not gonna be using. And we have some solid metal bushings right here, which are gonna help with our steering. Check that out, it just slips in right there. So we're gonna go ahead and install all this because this, this is going on there for good till the car is done. So let's go ahead and get the steering rack on there. So guys, check it out. The suspension is officially done on the car. We got everything bolted up. Obviously, we're still gonna have to tweak some things like the alignment and the steering a little bit, but everything is bolted on. We got the sway bar on, we got the steering rack. Everything is perfect and everything lined up. We didn't have any issues like with any metal warping or anything like that up here. So now that the entire front end of the car is fully assembled, we're actually gonna be moving on to the back of the car. And I do have this 20 gallon fuel cell right here that I actually wanna go ahead and install today because I wanna finish up all the final assembly of like anything that we have to do uh, like metal wise or cutting because as you guys know the factory original fuel tank kind of just sits in here and it bolts onto here but I didn't want to use the factory tank because it was old and it was rusty and honestly this right here was a lot cheaper than getting an OEM tank with a custom built in because uh, we are going to be doing inline fuel we're not going to have the sending unit inside so we're just kind of inline and which this is cool is because it has two ports right here which we'll be sending all the fuel through. I definitely will be getting some better AN fittings, but I mean, this is a pretty pretty decent tank. All the welds look pretty good. I think it was like $200. And then here we have the two, uh, two lines right here, which we are gonna need because we are gonna be running the V8, which has two fuel rails. So we're gonna need the two lines that go into there. And then I think we can use these two ports right here as a return, I think. Either one as a return and then the other one will just be vented because you do have to have a vent on here. And as you can see, there's a big old hole in here. So let's go ahead and do a little test fit and see how it's gonna line up inside here. 
And I definitely want to use the original fuel cap that's gonna go right here. So I guess we'll have to maybe drill a hole and weld an aluminum, uh, uh, I guess a, a nipple on the tip of that, just so we can have, let's see how it lines up in here. Oh. So there we have it right there. This thing definitely seems like it is pretty small, but it said it was 20 gallons, which I, I think it is 20 gallons. So basically all we're gonna have to do is just grab some of our sheet metal and basically build a little four in here for ourselves. Maybe I'll even lower it just a bit, maybe like lower it down like that, just to kind of, so we still have room in the back for groceries. Cause you know, sometimes we might want to take this thing grocery shopping. So let's go ahead and figure out exactly how we're gonna install this fuel tank. So guys, I went ahead and did some thinking of exactly how we're gonna do it. And I basically have this sheet metal right here, this piece right here, and it's gonna fit perfectly into this little opening right here. So check that out. We're gonna go ahead and close off all, all that big old hole that was right there. And then we're also gonna put a nice flat piece of sheet metal coming off of here. That's gonna basically connect everything. And this is all gonna get welded to the body. And then we can grab our fuel tank and simply put it right on top, just like this, this bad boy. I mean, there's not gonna be that much fuel space in here. There's not gonna be that much trunk space in here, which honestly doesn't really matter to me because this is gonna be a pro touring car, which I'm gonna be driving it probably like on the weekends and stuff like that. And I mean, if you need to put something in here, you can just put it in the back of the car or right here on the side. But yeah, everything lines up good. Now all we need to do is clean up some of the metal, get this piece welded in, and also get this uh, back section welded in. And the trunk area will be done. <laughs>
So guys, check it out. We got the entire plate welded in there. I actually went ahead and welded it all the way around just to give it that extra rigidity in the back. And then right here, I actually used a pretty thick piece of metal. Check it out. I used one of these. Uh, it's like pretty thick and basically just placed it in there and I stitch welded it to this bar in the back and then welded it all up there. And I think that's going to add a lot of structural rigidity to the it, to the back of this trunk because as you guys know there was the tank in here and it kind of just bolted in which wasn't too strong but we got everything welded up we also went ahead and painted everything with the strong rust proof the rust proof paint and a lot of people were like wondering what kind of paint i'm using and this stuff right here is actually some really strong and it's pretty expensive it's like 12 dollars a can that's kind of what we painted everything with and which it has 40 percent stronger against rust which is good because we do not want this thing rusting and this thing is already basically this is the last thing we have to weld onto the body except for the dashboard which that will come a lot later once we get all the pedals and everything inside but man i'm just so happy about how this thing turned out everything welded up perfectly didn't have any issues there and that's the trunk is done guys now this is pretty much how we're going to install this fuel tank i think we're going to go maybe sideways like that no, that doesn't look correct. Like this. Bam. It'll just get bolted down. Unfortunately, guys, we probably will not be able to use the fill hole that goes right here, the original gas cap, which I ain't too really worried about. Honestly, it's gonna be a nice conversation starter at the gas tank or the gas station when you gotta pop your trunk to fill up your car. Bam, check that out. And I'm not sure how we're gonna do it down there because you can probably see, well, you can see it's kind of sitting up because it does have like this little spout area right here where it's like a little drain. So I don't know if we should cut, cut it out of that or just raise it up a little bit, which I think maybe we'll just raise it up because I don't really want to be cutting into my brand new metal that I just welded and installed. But man, it does line up in there good. I'm kind of glad we did go ahead and just weld everything up fully solid in there because look at that, bam. Or I guess actually we could probably just cut a hole right there, but I'm still not too sure how we're gonna do all the fuel lines. I don't know if I wanna run them underneath the car or maybe run them inside the car, which probably would be a better option to do underneath the car. But we are going with a Holly system. It's like a dual pump, and it's gonna definitely have to sit somewhere inside here because I don't want that pump sitting at on the bottom of the car, which that's gonna be for a later episode once we start getting closer to that. But I really just wanted to knock out the last thing that we really had to weld on this car. And pretty much now, I think in the next episode, we'll go ahead and start doing all the body work on the car because as you guys know, we kind of just primed over everything. You can still see this is all pretty rough. All this needs body filler right here, which we just uh, primed it with the uh, epoxy, which is super nice. That's how everybody recommends you do it. I remember like, every time i'd cut and weld some people are like you're putting body filler right on metal so you know what we're just going to do it how how the comments say to do it which i think is the correct way but guys this car is coming together i cannot wait to continue finishing up this thing uh soon we're going to put the engine in build the transmission brace get all that braced up and we are still deciding either manual or automatic in this car which i'm kind of leaning towards automatic because automatic is just it's a lot easier to drive Plus, with a car with no traction control or anything like that, I think automatic will be the safer route to go. Plus, automatics are pretty advanced, not like, because a lot of people, when they think of an automatic transmission, they think of a slow clunker. But, you know, the manual transmissions or the autos that came in the 5.0, they're pretty, pretty nice transmissions and they shift pretty quick. So guys, make sure you stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna go ahead and knock out all the bodywork. Probably go ahead and put the doors back on, put all the fenders, start doing all the final assembly on the car because technically the fenders can go on for good, the doors can go on for good, and we're gonna just knock out all the bodywork, do all this bodywork right here. We have a little bit of dents on the quarter panels, which we're gonna be doing that in the next episode. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And also check out uh, vtune.com to grab you some merch, and also follow us on Instagram at vtune. Thank you.